Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with, yes, another Fairmont brake line repair video. Uh, this one is due to the compression fitting that we found during the process of our inspection, our initial inspection of this car. Uh, some of you had issue with that, but more importantly, as I've said in previous videos up to now, I'm looking to take this thing to the drag strip to run it and make a pass. Uh, in order to do that, they look over the vehicle and find out if there's any safety issues. And I think compression fittings might be on that list of, of safety issues that they might not want me to have. Furthermore, I plan to put a high performance engine in this car and I'm gonna replace that brake line anyway. So what's it gonna hurt to do it now? Well, that's the purpose of today's video. Now I thought of a couple of ways of going about this because replacing brake lines, you can go about it a couple of different ways. One, you can buy a pre-bent line that's already ready to go. Good luck with those. Uh, many times brake lines are, are fastened to the chassis before the body is ever put on the car. And uh, well, that makes it very easy for them, but not so easy for us after the, after the vehicle's all in one piece. Uh, so I thought of a couple of different methods. I actually have a straight piece of brake line. Uh, you can just buy a brake line in bulk and, and do it that way. And that's the approach that I've taken. It's much less expensive that way, but you have to do a little bit more work. Now, I thought of a couple of ways to going about this. One way I thought of was removing the old line and using that as my template for my new brake line, bending it up and forming it into the shape that I want. Another thought that I had was actually taking these coat hangers, throwing them on the floor, but then stringing them together in such a way to where I can make sort of a rough sketch of where the brake line would be bent or need to be bent in order to be uh, mounted onto the vehicle so that it was nice, so that it was clean. I wanna do a clean installation of this or at least as clean of an installation as I can. So we've got a little bit of work ahead of us. It is just one brake line after all, but I, I think it's gonna be fun. So instead of me uh, continuing on with this long intro, why don't we just jump in and, and find out because I'm about to learn something just like you. So let's find out what works with replacing brake lines on my Fairmont. All right, now it starts here at the proportioning valve and goes back up behind the master cylinder, underneath the wiper motor, across the top of the firewall or bulkhead, depending upon where you're from and loops around this other side. Now back over on this side here, uh, as you can see, there's a, uh, it's where they cut the old line off and just inserted the new line. They were just looking to get a repair and, and move out the door. Me, I wanna add a little art here. So uh, we're gonna do a little bit better job. I guess one of the first things I wanna do is come up with a plan. Uh, most successful repairs start with a good plan. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna determine which of these brake lines uh, coming through here actually goes where I need it to. And, it, and as you can see, it's this top one that comes through underneath, back around here. And looks like I'm the front or the rear one here on the proportioning valve. That's the one I'm gonna disconnect. Uh, briefly, I can tell you a little bit about the proportioning valve and that you can see both of these lines here coming in from the top uh, go into the proportion valve. And then you've only got three coming out. This one here is for the left front this one here is for the right front, and they've only got a single line going to the rear brakes. The rear brakes get virtually the same amount of pressure. And what this does, since the front brakes do about 80% of our braking, uh, this sort of doles out the pressure from the master cylinder, sends most of it to the front wheels and less of it to the back wheels. Um, so, and also, there's a mechanical valve inside of here to where if there was ever a hydraulic failure, what would happen is there would be a valve that would move in here, ground out this switch, and it would turn on the brake light on the dash. So this proportion valve serves somewhat of, a, of an important function. So what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna remove the brake line first. Uh, so I'll take this out of here, and it looks like I might have to uh, deal with uh, this other brake line, but we'll see. I'm not sure if I'll have to really get into that or not. Uh, no big deal, we'll have the braking system open anyway. But I'm gonna try to minimize brake fluid loss because I don't wanna bleed out my master cylinder during the course of doing this. So I'm going to grab something real quick. This is a cap for a bleeder valve. I actually think I can shove this up in here while I work so as not to bleed out the master. And over at the wheel, I'm going to crimp off the, uh, the brake hose down there so that we don't bleed everything out of the caliper. So the idea is to try to minimize brake fluid loss because we're going to have the system open for a while. And if it runs the master cylinder dry, we'll have to bleed all the wheels instead of just the one we're working on. Okay, I'm going to start by removing the old brake line that's still attached to this bracket. There's a section that's just uh, attached to the, uh, the inside here, and I'm just gonna remove that bracket and the old brake line with it. So my plan of attack is to uh, remove these brackets and, or these hold downs from the uh, bulkhead here and get the lines loose so that I can remove the old line 
and I can get that off the vehicle and get a look at it and see what I'm dealing with. Can't get through ulnar repair without dropping something. All right, here's my wiper motor, and as you can see, uh, the brake lines pass underneath, and it might be easier just to disconnect this uh, rather than trying to fight around it. So I'm just going to disconnect that, and that way I'll be able to get into this area a little bit easier. You can see the brake line passes underneath these two vacuum lines. It just makes sense to remove these now. Uh, that way they're not in the way. Be very careful with this vacuum tree. Please don't create another repair for me. <laughs> ah, there we go. Very thankful that broke loose. So now we've got more of a clear shot uh, with this line here. Okay, you can see down in here that this vacuum chamber is sort of looped around and the way this used to work is this brake line was behind this. Also to get down in this area, I think it would be so much easier if this weren't in the way. So I'm just gonna remove it. And it looks like somebody's already broken the bottom screw on it. So I can just remove this upper screw here. And I believe it'll just come out. actually position it more in the place where I want it to be. And now it's out of the way and I've got miles of room down in there to do what I need to do. Oddly enough, this wasn't screwed down here. Um, there isn't even a hole for it. That's just where it is. So <laughs> I guess from the factory, they just held it on like that and didn't want it flopping around. So they just put this big gob of stuff on here so it didn't make noise. So I don't bleed out my freshly rebuilt caliper and brake hose. I'm just going to crimp off this brake hose here and here's where the brake line comes in and I'm just going to knock that loose but I'm going to do it with the box in because I always yell at you for not using line wrenches uh, like this although I just literally had this loose the other day so it's not as much of an issue now but I'm loose over here and I'm ready uh, for when I get the other side disconnected and we can just remove the line as one piece. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this line right here uh, on the proportioning valve. Uh, that's where the other end of it terminates. And this side, I am gonna use my line wrench to start with. I'm using 11 millimeter here. That seemed to work just fine. Now I have my rubber plug sort of ready to go. And hopefully, I'll be able to do this and not bleed out the entire master cylinder in the process, which is the reason I'm going through all of this effort. I've also got a drip pan underneath here, just in case. I'm pop that guy out. I'm gonna take that plug and see if that'll go in. And it does. All right, as so long as I don't step on the brake pedal, I believe we're gonna keep the brake fluid inside the master, which is kind of where we want it. Uh, and now we'll remove the line from the rest of this and get a look at it on the bench outside the car. All right, one of the things you may notice, uh, I'm gonna try to get this uh, line out of here, is the windshield washer hose is also in the way. Now, this being old and crusty, I'm gonna employ a slightly different tact as far as getting this apart. Now, I still have some more of this, plus I actually have some extra line if I need it. So instead of trying to pull this off of here, I'm gonna do something that I often do with old hoses like this, and I just have a small razor blade here, and I'm just gonna sort of slice it down the center, like so, and I'm gonna peel it away like an orange. This means that I don't break these tiny little plastic pieces here and that would just be a bad day. So now I can get the brake line past it without any problems. 
the final connection of the, this brake line is here at the brake hose, so I'm just going to knock it loose and try to push it through that opening and hopefully get this brake line out of here. A rag helps me get a better grip on things sometimes. And there we go. This brake line is loose. Let's get it out of there. Now we just got to get the brake line out of here. And this part's always a bit fiddly. It's one side loose. my prize. Awesome. Let's take it over to the bench. All right, now we're over here at the bench and I'm still figuring out a plan of attack. This is kind of a as I go kind of thing. Now I have all the tools here and if you'll take a look here, yes, this is the uh, flare tool from Eastwood, which I'm really happy to have this today because this is a perfect opportunity to use it. Now here's, here's my biggest challenge is trying to get this new brake line into the shape of this, but actually a little bit better because you'll notice down in this section from the compression fitting on down, it was pretty much bent by hand and just done to get the job done. But I wanna be able to utilize this bracket. So I've been sort of ruminating on this idea of taking this off at the compression fitting, this piece of line here, attaching this to the uh, brake hose underneath in the wheel well, and just forming this piece to fit what I need. And then once I have that in the, the correct size, I can sort of reattach it and I have kind of an idea of what to do with this section. And I can use this whole piece here as my template. A uh, couple of things. First of all, the ends on each of these are of different sizes. And if you're concerned about the ends and, and getting the correct fittings here, what you can do is you can cut off the old uh, cut the old line and reuse your old fittings, uh, especially if they aren't damaged. However, if they are damaged, you're going to need to replace them. Now, what I found was, is the connection at the proportioning valve was of a smaller size than the connection at the uh, actual brake line itself. The brake line has a larger diameter thread. Let's put them on the line. No, we're good. Yeah, the inner diameter which in this case, this is a 3 16th brake line. Now, how do I know that? I have a 3 16th drill bit. I showed this actually, I'll put a link in the description to that uh, flare tool video. Uh, a quick way to do it is just to take a 3 16th drill bit, hold it up against the line. Thankfully, it's the same size as this. Another way to do it is uh, with a micrometer. And it just so happens I have a neat little digital one here. Zero it up, measure this line. We got, uh, looks like 187 or 192. Make up your mind. All right, 18, about 184, 185. Come over to our factory line. It seems to be slightly larger. Let's check this line now. I know it's 316th. There we go, 185. So this will work. And uh, even with the compression fitting here. So as I said, I'm trying to figure out how to bend my new line and make sure I get the correct length, but also make sure that it's, it's bent in such a way to where when I install it, it fits properly. And that's gonna take some doing. I'm also gonna use my uh, forming pliers from, also from Eastwood. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy to have these. You can, you can do this by hand if you really need to. In fact, this is what was done before. This was bent by hand, obviously to me. It seems like it's just done. And you wanna avoid any kinks. 
That's what this pair of pliers does. So as long as you've got these sweeping bends here, you're fine. But once you try to do tight bends like this, you run the chance of kinking the line and you really don't want to do that. So to avoid that, use a proper tool. And this is what I'm going to use today. There's also other benders, uh, but investing in something like that for one job like this doesn't really make much sense. These pliers seem to work fairly well. I think what I'll do is, as I said, I'm going to start with just this section to see if I can get this bent in such a way to where it, it more closely matches what the factory was because I want to fasten this to the body as this one was not. All right, now I believe I have plenty of brake line to do this job and to make this line. Uh, the thing of it is, is you may not have that luxury of having more than enough line. You may only have a finite amount. And one thing you might want to do is employ the same method with the coat hanger to make yourself a rough sketch of what you have and then you can straighten that out and determine what the overall length is. So once, you, once you've got the coat hanger bent into shape and cut to the proper length, you could then straighten the whole thing out, measure that, and then you'll know how much of this line you'll need. I'm going to employ a slightly different method. It may be somewhat cumbersome, but I'm just going to keep going with this line and bend it to shape as much as possible. At least that's what I'm going to try to attempt to do now. Uh, and hopefully I'll come up with uh, what I need. Now this seems to be a lot more malleable than the other stuff. But I think what I'll start to do is I'm going to flare one end. So why don't we start by flaring one end. And I think I'm going to start in the left side of the vehicle that goes into the proportion valve with the smaller fitting. So I have to be sure that I'm using the correct fitting. And as I said before, you can just cut off your old fittings and reuse those on your new brake line if they're still viable. If they're all rounded off, well, this is a perfect opportunity to start with new fittings. Uh, I'm just going to do that now. So you want to make sure your fitting is, uh, especially on the second one, this first one, not so much because you can actually go to the other end and wind it back through. But once you flare that end, you're not going to be able to get that off of there. Let's uh, take this line over to the flare tool and we'll do a nice double flare on this uh, to get started. Now we get to use one of my favorite tools. Uh, it was made for this very job and that is double flaring. It's what we need to do to our brake line here. Uh, it's fairly easy to use. I will put a link in the description to the actual review of this tool. Since we're working with 3 16th uh, brake line, we're gonna use the 3 16th die that we have. And since we're doing that double flare, we need to use not the flat side, but the beveled edge. We're gonna first slide that down into place. Uh, we're gonna spin it around to the OPO because when I insert the brake line here, I'm going to want it to, uh, I'm going to want to seat it properly. Once again, I want to make sure that my die is also on the same thing. And actually, I think I'm going to get, it, if I remember correctly, I need to get a little bit of anti-seize and put it on the end of the uh, brake line, which I'm going to do now. It needed some sort of lubricant on the end in order for this to work well. Uh, I'm obviously going to clean that up when I'm done, but for now this will work for our purposes. So I'll leave it out just a little bit. Once again, the beveled edge. I'm going to close this down, push that in. I'm not going to lock it down yet. I'm just, I'm just getting it close. And then I'm going to take the handle. I'm going to push it so that it's flush. And then while it's flush, I'm going to lock it down. So our die is locked into place. We're flush. Everybody's happy. And now I'm going to switch over. This is a two-step operation. Um, there's an OP1 and an OP2 for 3 sixteenths. Here's my OP1 for 3 sixteenths. And quite simply, push it till it bottoms out. Got that. Now we're going to go to OP2, 3 sixteenths, which I believe is that. OP2, 3 sixteenths. So what we just did was a bubble flare. Now we're going to go for the, the uh, double flare. And I will be very surprised if I don't pull this out and find a perfect flare. Check that out.
Okay, uh, now that I've got it pretty much bent into shape and I know about how much I'm gonna use, I'm gonna bring my tubing cutter in. I'm gonna leave a little bit extra, just a little bit, if I, just in case. This isn't the perfect bend that I was looking for, but I think it's passable. I think it'll work. All right, with this tool, you wanna come around with the initial cut, tighten it a little more, tighten it. Maybe go around a couple times this time. And the idea is not to crank down on it an enormous amount. And do it gradually. And eventually you'll get through. And now let's go over to the flare tool. Something that I found helpful when doing this was to crimp this off with a pair of vice grips just to hold this in place, just to get things started. Uh, what would happen is, is the line was sort of going everywhere while I was doing this. Uh, and you know, that's what I ended up with. So I found the best way to do it was just to clamp those two things together. But now that I have my somewhat completed line, I can Put the last flare on, which is this guy here. I want to make sure I get my end on there first. I'm gonna see if there's any burrs or anything in there. I don't think there is. I think we'll be fine. Uh, a little bit anti-seize. Stick it down inside the die. OP0. side I'm just gonna snug it I'll bring it flush tighten it down uh, 3 16 up one right there go until it bottoms out. 3 sixteenths op 2, that's 5 sixteenths, there we go, op 2, and that should be it, we just made ourselves a brake line. Now, Let's take it over to the car and see how successful we really were. All right, well, this is the moment of truth. It either worked or it didn't. It's my first time making a brake line, so I don't think I did too bad. Normally what I do is I just replace them with factory bent brake lines. It's just easier. However, I, had, I already had brake line here. It didn't make much sense to do it any other way, if I'm honest. So we'll just give this a try. Looks like getting it down and over there is going to be the way to go. I also removed the air cleaner to make it easier to get down in here. Well, that side went in nicely. Now my bend may be slightly off here, but it looks like I'm pretty well in. I have a little bit extra down on that end, but just from you know a mock-up standpoint, I think I got it pretty darn close. I'll be able to use that. I might bend a little more of it down there, but outside of that, I think I did pretty good, all things considered. Uh, I guess we'll 
Well, let me let me look inside that wheel well. Get that dirt out of there, but it looks like looks like that's pretty much bang on too. So I'm pretty darn close. Gosh darn it, I bent myself a brake line. Okay, I'm gonna connect it up to the proportioning valve first, remove my plug. Insert my line. Try to thread it up. And it's a different size now. Now it's a 10 millimeter. But that's okay. Just care that it doesn't leak. That feels solid. Now we'll fasten the other side down. All right, now a little bit of debris got in the end of this as I was fishing this down in here and I've cleaned it out. Uh, but you might wanna consider like putting a rubber cap or something on the end of this before fishing it down into an area like this where there's a lot of dirt. Uh, that could help prevent that situation for you. Oh, it seems to be going in okay. I don't feel any resistance like it's cross-threaded or anything like that. We're fastened down on both ends now. Let's uh, see if we can fasten it down to the vehicle. All right, now that I'm fastened on both ends, a little bit of massaging to get it to fit a, a little bit better, but once that's done, we're ready to bleed the brakes. Uh, it is a little bit long here, and I'm concerned about contact with this hood hinge a little bit. So I'll, I'll probably bend it out and around, similar to what this is, uh, just to get it in there. But first, I'm gonna fasten it down below. And I'll do that using that bracket. I got pretty close. Here, let me give you a close-up shot of that. And as you can see in here, I'm, I'm away from the body a little bit, but I got it pretty darn close. So I'm gonna fasten it down there where I have that bracket and then work my way back up from there. Okay, I've got the first bracket fastened. And now I'll just come up in here and try to massage things into place a little bit better. I'm not going to use the pliers for this. This is more going to be a free forming kind of thing. And I believe I've got that away from the body and it's not going to be making contact. I think I'll be fine with that. So now I'll just reattach this bracket, which before, I don't know if you remember, but we didn't even have the ability to do this. It wasn't even there, but now we've got that. So it does appear that we were making progress over what was here. And we got rid of that compression fitting, which was uh, probably the biggest thing. Another bracket down. It's almost like I know what I'm doing, almost. All right, we got one last bracket. Okay, I'm a little bit off up here, but that's okay. Because I'll just form it in a little bit. And we can do the same thing. Let's come up with our clip. Both lines into it. I just want it straight up and down like this. I don't want it twisting or binding the lines up. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna say that's done. Here we are, brake line installed. That was some effort, but I think worth it, honestly, in the end. I don't have to worry about the compression fitting anymore. I will admit that as far as using those pliers and that tool, that took a bit of getting used to, to try to figure out how to use those. I, I don't have, that's the first time I've used those pliers to do anything like this. Mostly I've bent it by hand. Sometimes you can take a large socket and wrap it around the socket if you've got a large arcing bend. In fact, I might have been better off doing that here. Uh, but I don't think, I didn't, I didn't really kink it up all, enough to really be nervous about it. I think I've got it. Uh, but now I have a complete line going from one side to the other. And I'm hoping that's enough to get me a pass at the track. 
and that's that's what we're after here so we'll find out so now we'll bleed the brakes uh, bleed out that side and find out if we've got a brake pedal if we do we'll check for leaks and if we don't have any leaks we're done now I've covered bleeding the brakes on this car uh, in other videos and I'll post the link in the description mainly the one where I replaced the brake hoses so I don't really feel I need to go over that again so really we're just gonna kind of come back after we finish bleeding the brakes check for leaks and then we'll wrap this video up hold it pump it up how's that feel good firm no leaks on this end I don't see any it's bone dry that's thanks to our flaring tool. Now let's go uh, check it over at the uh, proportioning valve. Looks like the proportioning valve also uh, is not leaking. So it looks like uh, we got a win. Yay. So if I can do it, you can do it. All right, we bled the air out of the line. <sighs> gonna top off the master here. It's obviously gonna be a little bit low from our bleeding procedure. And we've, I've already changed the brake fluid out on this, actually a couple of times. Uh, this is the third time bleeding these brakes in, <laughs> I think, less than a week. Uh, but now we have a complete brake line that uh, hopefully will pass our inspection. There's a few other miscellaneous things to reconnect, uh, put the air cleaner and everything back on. Nothing really too major to, to wrap the job up, and I don't really feel it's necessary to uh, to show you all that. Really what I wanted to show you was the brake line part. Coat hangers are good for sketching uh, and that might be helpful. A good flare tool also really helpful. Be careful if you have those pliers. There'll be links in the description to all the tools that I used uh, but if you do use those pliers why don't you go ahead and practice for a little bit on another line similar to what I did earlier. I got a couple of good bends out of it but the later ones like some of these I was bordering on kinking the line and you don't want to kink the line. Uh, so you have to be mindful of that. So a little bit of practice might help in that sense. Uh, outside of that, it's tedious work. It's going to take you a while. Uh, this would have taken me like all morning, uh, into the afternoon maybe, uh, for something like this. And this is just the front brake line. The ones that go to the rear can be even more involved. Uh, so give yourself plenty of time if, if this is your daily driver and you need to get where you're going uh, if you're going to do this. So start pretty early and take your time. And as I said, those coat hangers will work really nice to sketch your, sketch your work out before you actually commit to using the actual brake line. But it's a lot less expensive to do it this way. However, uh, if, if, it's, if you don't see yourself able to do this and you don't have a really good flare tool, I can't stress that enough. That Eastwood flare tool that I've got really makes a huge difference uh, when doing this type of work. You can use other flare tools, but you may not be as successful. And if you have to go through and do the work again, that uh, can be difficult. The thing about that tool is, is you have to use it off the car. So if you're needing to do flares inside the car, it doesn't really work because that needs to be mounted in a device. So that is its drawback. So it's not a perfect tool, but it certainly does its job extremely well and I was glad to have it today. That being said, it's patience, it's practice. As I said, this is the first one of these I've done. I know, I've been a, I've been a mechanic for years, but this is not something I normally do. I normally just buy the line and try to put it on and, and trust me that can be challenging enough just trying to fish it through different places. Speaking, speaking of fishing it through different places I would recommend you put something on the end of the line before you fish it down into a dirty area like what I had there. I did end up with a little bit of dirt in the end of the line that I had to clean out. Uh, maybe a little bit of compressed air through it would have uh, knocked that out and you know if you run into that situation. Uh, but I hope that is all the tips that you need and all the information you need to do this job on your own. As I said, it's something that uh, you could probably tackle yourself in an afternoon, morning, what have you. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me over at ericthecarguy.com. And if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you go there. And we have a welcome video to tell you about all the wonderful things that we have available to you to help you with those automotive questions. If you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. I post videos, repair videos, every Friday, so stop back and see me. And I close each of my videos with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. I will see you next time.